Hi everybody and welcome to Adobe Live. We'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land in which we are creating and streaming from today and pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. My name is Flynn and I'm joined by logo designer originally from the UK on the Gold Coast, James Barnard. Hey James, how you doing? Hello sir, um, happy new year. Is it too late to say happy new year? Is last day. Knows? I think it's the last day we can say okay, happy new year. Okay, officially happy new year and then we're done <laughs> until next year. Um, no, thanks for having it. me again, mate. It's great to be back. Uh, yeah, looking forward to getting cracking. I'm excited. Yeah, excited to have you back. This is the second time being here on Adobe Live. We did a stream, I think it was end of November or something like that, um, right. which seems like a long time ago, but um, you know, Christmas holidays and holiday breaks and all that. Exactly. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, it feels abs like an absolute age ago considering what's happened. Um, <laughs> and after, you know, two weeks of looking after the kids outside of daycare, it feels like um, a long time. Yeah. <laughs> but um, we're the other side back. Yeah, yeah. Back to working again now and, uh, you know, enjoying the freelance life again. There we go. Yes, I feel exactly the same way. Um, what's <laughs> up, chat? Hope you guys are all doing great. Um, so we're here live for an hour. If you've got any questions as we're rolling along, please don't hesitate to throw them in chat. That's what we're here for. Um, and um, yeah, do you want to kind of, we'll, we'll segue, we'll, we'll jump in. We can just jump straight across. Um, sure. So the idea was we're going to do some how to take a sketch like a pencil sketch pen sketch something like that from a physical notebook and then a process of getting it into illustrator and creating some vector art out of it that's right that's right now for those that know me or saw the last stream uh you'll know that i'm absolutely terrible at sketching um i use it usually just to kind of as a logo designer to kind of rule out ideas but in terms of like being an artist or an illustrator, I am definitely not. So I work things like this up in Sketch to give me an idea of a direction to take with the design. And today we're going to use a quote from a book that I just finished. Um, I don't know if you can see it on the screen now, but I just yeah, recently we'll read. It over. The yeah, I had recently read the Show Your Work collection by Austin Cleon, and I'm ashamed to say I've never actually read this before. Um, one of my colleagues, Liz Mosley, uh, suggested this to me, and uh, it's brilliant, absolutely amazing. Makes me feel like feel, feel better about showing my work. Makes me feel better about stealing <laughs> ideas from other artists. But in the last one, uh, the Keep Going book, there's a chapter in there about. Um, uh, getting fresh air to sort of remove demons. The the the, um, the chapter in the book is called "Demons Hate Fresh Air." So it's all about going for walks, going to do exercise. It inspires you uh, in a creative way. It allows you. It sort of helps your mental health by getting out and exercising. And the the type he starts that chapter off with the quote: "To exercise is to exorcise." Okay, spelt slightly differently. So like this, right. spelt like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the idea being that by exercising, you're exercising demons from your body. Okay. So so I like that quote. I think it's brilliant. I think it's a great way to get people out there. Great, great way to get people um, motivated to go for walks, just to you know clear their head a little bit. Big champion of that. Mm -hmm. So um, I want to kind of solidify this quote into some sort of conceptual logo. Now we could maybe turn this into actual a fake logo for a gym brand, maybe, or we could just do it as a slogan for a t-shirt. But I really like the idea of um, this kettlebell. Um, forming a demon. So mm. I did a bit of, uh, you know, image searching for kettlebells and I, I spotted this image in the middle there, the black and white one. And you see how the, the, the two spotlights are on the kettlebell shining like that and it oh, looks yeah. like demon yep. eyes. Uh, it gave me a great idea to basically use the horns of the sort of the start of the kettlebell handle to be the horns of the demon's head. Mm. Um, so we could basically take a kettlebell design um, try and work that design so that the horns are isolated from it, but it still looks like the kettlebell handle. And then we're going to wrap that up in a piece of type, put a little demon's face in there. I like this um, sort of pumpkin style demon's face, mainly because it's easier to draw. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll, <laughs> start we'll see with how that start goes. Start with a circle. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So, like I said, we're not going to work with um, by sketching. Sorry, by tracing the sketch that we've done, we're just going to use that as a reference. So I'm cool. just going to move um, this over to another artboard. And just as yeah. we're jumping into that, we actually have our first question um, from Derek. Thanks for the question. Um, and the question is, uh, do you prefer to use grid or plain papers when sketching to vector? So it looks like you have a grid notebook there. What, like, maybe I tell us about your notebook or what you prefer? Because, yeah, because it obviously being 
um sort of logo based design uh you, you the general sort of shape of a logo should form into just should fit inside a square so it's equal height and width and it's best the most versatile design um for a logo uh, this is what my kind of my sketch looks like I'm sorry you probably no, no, we can see that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and I work in grid paper. Yeah. So, this is the kind of idea. This is a logo that I did recently for a structural engineering firm. A um, little peek behind the scenes there. So, I was working with some sort of compass ideas, but having the grid paper on there really helps me keep things mathematical and geometrical, mm. um, so that it's easy enough to you know bring into Illustrator and use shapes to to sort of form that design. So, grid paper for the win. There we go. I love that. That's a great start. Okay. Yeah, thanks for the question, uh, Derek. And if there's any yeah. more questions as we roll along, throw them in just like Derek did. Appreciate it. Okay, cool. So here's our sketch. I'm just going to put this into the uh, top left-hand corner of our artboard. And actually, I'm going to use this photo of the kettlebell to, as a starting point for this design because, um, you know, it's, it's actually a, a more symmetrical thing for me to trace rather than my sketch. And we can use shapes to sort of... Um, to trace around this now before we get going i just want to show you what i'm working with here I, I mentioned this in my last stream but i use this tool uh which is the um the macro keyboard from work louder now if you see me um you know some magic happen on the screen here if my um uh you know things start happening quite quickly like i have a button here for instance that's center aligned so i just press it once and it vertically and horizontally centers I love that that. stuff um i'm gonna be using stuff like that a lot and i also have this mouse with the track wheel on the side so if you see me zoom flying in and out um zooming on the screen it's because i'm scrolling this mouse wheel backwards and forwards on the side here so it's a mm. really quick way for me to slide around in illustrator okay. so you've got them so mapped to those gonna... things just really quickly but if people you know if you as long as you have a middle mouse wheel you could do the same thing right like your you could. scroll is on you the could. on the edge and just yep. so people don't feel like they're left out and you could hop you could um create a shortcut as well to do some of the things James has. James just has this device that makes it really quick and easy and, yeah. and a bit natural and I guess a bit more muscle memory rather than kind That's of right. reaching over and hitting F5 or yeah. multiple keys and things like that. So Exactly right. It's just things that I do all the time on a day-to-day -day basis and it saves me just a couple of seconds here, a couple of seconds there, yeah. but over the course of a lifetime, it saves me... <laughs> That's yes. like a billion dollars. Like if you add exactly, it up. Yeah. exactly. If I charge that to a client, <laughs> scared to think how much that would be. Okay, so so there's my circle on the screen. I press my magic button on my keyboard. Boop boop. Centers it on the screen. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line that background image up with that circle so that the image itself is aligned to the center because obviously the image is sort of top weighted because it's got a handle on it. And and I'm going to put this uh, image onto a background layer by dragging it down on our layers panel. I'm going to lock that layer and then I'm going to work on that artwork layer on top. So that way I'm not clicking and touching that image. It's not getting in the way when I'm selecting my shapes and I can sort of use this as a sort of tracing um, point. Okay, so we'll get the pen tool out now and I'm just going to try and draw this handle as best as I can. So I'm going to use the extremities of this shape, holding down shift to keep the um, path handles on the sort of um, the horizontal and the vertical. So if I click here and hold down shift, and I'll draw a nice smooth line over here. Now I can press alt and shift to bring that down. And also I only want to do half of this because I want this to be nice and um, symmetrical. So I'm gonna find, see where it's the smart guide is, is lining up with the center of the circle. Mm. Actually it wasn't, it was just off. That's annoying. So what I'll do, I'm going to draw a line from the middle of the circle uh, there. And so I'm making like your that. own like custom guide there that you can yeah, see and exactly. snap to. Exactly right. Oh, by the way, make sure you have smart guides switched on for this view. Smart guides or Apple U saves you so much time. So I'm just going to drag that. And I don't know why that's not snapping. There we go. Okay, so that's basically the first half of that handle. I'm gonna bring that to the front and then pick that path point up. Shift and click down in a, in a straight line. And then we're gonna draw across. Let's just try this out. There we go. I'll draw the other half of our handle. And I'm gonna try and line this up with the edge of the um, circle as smoothly as possible. I'm just gonna draw little bit of a handle out there and holding down alt and shift i'm going to drag that one up just to make it nice and smooth now i can overlap where we pick that off underneath the circle just to create our shape and if i press 
uh, shift and X just to solidify that. That's what it's looking like. So it's actually like one, two, three, six, seven path points for that shape, which is really, really good. You know, we're not we're not overcomplicating this. Design. So you don't. So just on that. So you want to have you generally, if you're trying to make like natural shapes or basic shapes, you want to have minimize the amount of like pen points. Um, that's that right. right? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And also when you're sending over a logo to a client later on, uh, they might use it for things like laser cutting or, you right. know, who knows what. And if there's if there's a million path points on a logo, um, nodes and lots of path points like that can really get in the way with actually, you know, using the hardware in terms of um, cutting this design out. So it's always good to try and use as few point path points as possible. And like I say, we're using this kettlebell as a guide, but this is looking pretty nice now. So if I just invert that, that's the sort of the general shape of our kettlebell. So if I, uh, now my special button on my uh, keyboard is flip and copy. Click. That is just mm. flip that over. But obviously, um, object. Uh, I've even forgotten how to do it now because I haven't done this in so long. Object transform reflect, and and then you would just do vertical and then press copy down here to do that. Okay. But like I say, I do that all the time. So I'm just making sure that uh, I'm saving as much time as possible. I also have all of my pathfinder options on this little keyboard here. So basically, everything thing you see there, those top four pathfinders unite minus front intersect and exclude are all four buttons on this thing here oh, so i'm going to use that a lot yeah and i've even got a set of uh, keys uh, oh, assigned cute. for that as well so um yeah it's, just, it's almost like i'm a professional isn't it <laughs> um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to unite those two by pressing my button that's one shape now and i do command y to uh to check that out now i'm noticing a little bit of a kink here uh where i didn't quite get my um that that line sort of straightened up now there's a few ways i can sort that out it, it is going to be noticeable to, to me it's going to bother me you see how there's a corner handle on that there mm -hmm. i could actually probably just drag that up as far as it will go or input an absolutely huge volume into the corners and it straightens it up for me, which mm. is probably the best way to do it. Um, if there wasn't a corner handle there, another way to do that would be to draw a line across from the top most you know, points of that um, shape and then use the Shape Builder tool to cut the extra little kinky bit away. Um, now, I'm going to leave the uh, handle and the circle separate from each other um, because I'm, I'm going to use the circle as a kind of reference point for the middle of that kettlebell and I don't want to lose that um, just yet as well. We can also use this later on um, for aligning our type around a path to get it nice and centered to the middle point of the design. You see how we've got the, um, in our sketch, we've got the actual type going around the central circle part of the kettlebell mm. and the two wording in between there. Um, so yeah, we can use that circle as a reference point. So I'm going to leave that where it is. Uh, and now we can work on trying to isolate the horns from this kettlebell. Let's make these black. And also, I'm going to get, I'm going to turn off my background layer now. I don't think we need that anymore. We've got our lovely traced kettlebell shape. I think that's looking pretty good. Um, and just as as we're moving on to the next bit, there was a question um, in chat. Uh, do you have any tips for flattening the learning curve of the pen tool? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I like that, that was a bit of a pun in there. So credit. Yeah, very like good. Me. Very good. Not lost on me. Uh, good dad joke. Um, so yes, I do. So there's a great game. If you go to bezier.method.ac, uh, do you, you know how, notice how I know that off by heart? Mm. Because that, that tool is the, such a fun way to learn pen tool. Um, the, the, the features on that little game are so good. It just basically explains every little aspect of the pen tool. And it's a really great way to pick up the basics and, and learn about the keyboard shortcuts required. And, ba and it, it has games in there to basically help you draw shapes with as few path points as possible, which is always the aim with the pen tool, right? You never want to overcomplicate it. Uh, it makes the design look as smooth as it, as it you know, possibly can. Uh, but yeah, check that out. Uh, right. So what, what just happened there was I just I didn't like the kink on you see on the right hand side the kink is a little bit sharp so I just smoothed that out but obviously now it doesn't match left to right so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut the right hand side away again uh, with a line and I'm going to use the, the shape builder tool shift and M option click the right side away and then I'm going to copy and flip that back 
and now we're working with an exact copy of Beautiful. the shape and unite those two together. Can you just show us how to bring up the shape builder tool as well? Was that a shortcut that you have? I'm just wondering. Shift an M. Shift, Shift an M. M. Okay. Yeah. The shape okay. Builder tool. So obviously with the shape builder tool, uh, if you select all the things that you want to unite together, Shift and M uh, will unite them like so. So that's all one shape now. Undo. Or if you want to remove any section, you press option and it just wipes away the part that you don't want. You just Very draw cool. over the bit you need. Yep. I'm going to leave those unconnected actually because I want to now separate the um, this uh, these handles from the design and make them look like horns. Okay, so in our sketch, we've got the um, horn of the demon is kind of woven into the, um, the handle. Now I've done it with a bit of shading here, but I probably don't want to do that if we want to make a logo that works in one color. Um, if we were going to, you know, go down a bit sort of more detailed, we could add a gradient to that and like, fade it into the background. But I'm just going to put like a white piece over the top here to cut that horn away from the design. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the pen tool again. I'm just going to start really roughly uh, just drawing um, a sort of horn shape out of the um, the right and the left hand side of this um, handlebar. And I'm going to do it a bit really roughly, but I'm going to make this top shape white. So immediately there, we can see that the horn is now being sort of cut away from the design. And now I can take the the um, path points here and just move them around a little bit to try and make them as smooth as possible and make that horn shape just look as um, organic as possible, I guess. Do you know what I mean? Just make mm. it look as... Try and keep the weight of the handle on the right so it's not cutting away from the design too much, um, but also making sure that it still looks like a horn. So let's just move this over a little bit. So it's a bit of a balance between the two. You want it to clearly be a horn, but at the same time, you don't want to take away from like the, the structure the like of the kettlebell right. as well. So there's probably like a right. really happy middle in there somewhere. That's right. So what I'm doing now is just moving the outside path points of that white shape in order to kind of isolate it a little bit so that's looking quite good so we've definitely got like a horn appearing out of the design here but it's still the whole thing is still kind of feeling like that it's um part of the handle i'm going to try and smooth that up a little bit just so that it looks so that the um cut itself is still feeling nice and circular um there we go that's not bad Getting a little bit of a kink there where it's not quite touching, and that's my fault because I haven't aligned this properly to the edge of the design. And also, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to add a transform handle here just so I can bend this a little bit closer. So to do that, you just press Option with the pen tool and add in. Oh, hang on, not quite. I'm going to actually just connect that up now. If I press Option and drag, it adds. Uh, mm handles back up and now I can just bring this down a little bit so command Y out of outline mode still getting a little kink there sorry this is my OCD kicking in here there's <laughs> just a, a sort of hair of a kink appearing uh, there so hopefully that will sort it out it is important go. to get something like that right at this beginning stage though as well because you can kind of get really excited get all the way down and then yeah start duplicating stuff flipping it over to the other yeah. side and then realize i don't like it mm -hmm. um like i'm going to keep the um everything where it is at the minute and just i'm making sure that this handle here doesn't go past the halfway point so that when i flip and copy this i can use this as a reference so we've got a horn cut out of the kettlebell so i'm going to select that white isolated shape select the left hand side and flip and copy those again just so that i can use the other handle as a reference point and it keeps the piece of white uh, in the right place right. and now i can just delete that top one because we've got two of them now and now that that white section that's covering the horn is in exactly the same place on the other side so there we go i've got our lovely horn cut out of this design it's very cool i really like the use of negative space there yeah, it's working, isn't it? So that's that's all right. So that's a you know we've definitely got a devil shape inside that kettlebell, uh, and the handle is still there though. So the, the sort of central point of the handle is still working. So I'm happy with that. Now Aaron Draplin vectors are free. I'm just going to duplicate that over to our other side here. <laughs> is that a uh, quote just, that Draplin's made before? It certainly is. It certainly <laughs> is. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, I've not heard that one. If, if this was, wasn't a live stream, this would already be the messiest document. I would have seven copies of this all over my um, artboard here, but we're going to just, we'll go a bit slower today. All right, let's make our um, face in our design. So we've gone with the, um, now I'm, I'm struggling to remember the Roald Dahl uh, Nightmare Tim Burton Before movie. Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. The Nightmare Before Christmas. That's his face. Got to get in there. there before Johanna does in chat. Thankfully, yes, we're, we're, we're 30 yeah, seconds ahead of time. So <laughs> she would she would have jumped in all caps Brilliant. in chat if I didn't get that. Yeah. So, yeah. Too slow, Johanna. <laughs> all right. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to get our favorite friend out the pencil tool and we're just just going to start drawing in white over the top of our uh, design here. So let's get the pencil tool out, which is N on the keyboard shortcut. I'm just going to draw a rough approximation of that eye. Now I'm working with a mouse, so that is pretty horrible. Uh, I'm just going to make that white. Now, the beauty of the pencil tool, which I didn't know until about six months ago, is that you can shave off and add parts of this just using the pencil tool directly. So see how that just added a little shape there to mm -hmm. round it off slightly? Uh, I can make it a bit rougher and, and do this. But I didn't know that the pencil tool could do this for the longest time until Abby Connick, a fellow designer, a friend of mine, um, showed me. Uh, so yeah, so we can do the same on the other side. Now I'm just going to flip and copy that with my magic keyboard shortcut, but we don't want them too uniform. We're going for a little bit of a sketchy look here. So I can then uh, press N and just change this one slightly. Uh, we can maybe just take a little chunk out of here or maybe on the right hand side, just remove a little bit of material. Now the one on the left is looking too uniform. So we're going to do the same here. Okay, we've got our eyes reasonably close there. Okay, so our spooky eyes sort of where they need to be. I like the fact that they are um, not uniform. Mm. We'll do the same with our nose portions underneath with the pencil tool. Just draw a little wiggly shape. Make that white. And I'll flip and copy that underneath. And again, no uniformity here on the squiggly line a little bit. Just so you know, on the pencil tool, if you try and do that, um, it might not work for you because you need to change a couple of settings in the pencil tool in order for that to work. So if you just double click on the pencil tool, take a screenshot of this, uh, fidelity, set that to smooth, close paths when ends are within 15 pixels and just drag that slider all the way up. That will make sure that you don't add a shape rather than manipulating another one. It's Sometimes it's a little bit finicky when you try and connect the shape back up to where it was before. Um, it sometimes just adds another shape on top and it's really annoying. And I had the biggest problem trying to find that out the first time. Uh, double click on the pencil tool, change those options to that and it'll be fine. Okay. Nice. Happy, happy with this. So now we're going to draw our mouth shape. Um, so I'm just going to bring this over a little bit. So it's, it's wider than the eyes, which gives it that really sort of creepy look. I'm just going to use a brush to do this. Just Apple um, eye drop our um, white background there. I'm just going to draw in our smiley face. Really rough. Okay, and it's obviously it's going to be really uniform. I kind of don't want that. But I'm just going to draw the um, the teeth. So the teeth are actually kind of going to be black but the white will sort of reveal the teeth behind it. Do you know what I mean? So it's sort of, mm. a, a, it looks like a stitch, but also it kind of gets this kind of pumpkin vibe going on. Uh, and I make the ones in the middle slightly longer. Again, really not uniform here. Now the brush is beautiful because it's a perfectly circular um, you know, shape, but it's, that's not what we want for this. So I'm gonna, um, copy everything so actually just let me just group up the nose and the eyes and now i'm going to select all of this i can unselect the group and the circle and group those together um i'm going to duplicate this over to our other one just so we've got a copy of it before i start messing around with this uh now i'm going to go i've got a, a key, obviously i've got a keyboard shortcut for this for expand um but if you didn't want to do that object expand appearance and now that's converted all of those shapes to outlines i can unite those together with my magic pathfinder buttons 
Uh, but again, that, this is a lovely shape, but it is a little bit too uniform for me. So I'm going to apply a little effect to this uh, in order to make this a little bit rougher. So if we go to um, Effect, Distort and Transform and Roughen. Whoa. I'm just going to press... Yeah, uh, it's horrible. <laughs> I'm just going to press OK on that and zoom in a bit just so that we can see what's happening here. If I bring up the Appearance panel, um, we have uh, a Roughen effect here, which means I can now edit this effect once it's already been applied. And with Preview checked, just to make sure that it's actually showing what we want, I'm just going to change this to Smooth. Uh, absolute and then just bring the size of it down a bit so it's just roughening those um edges a bit in order to make them look um you know, just a little bit wobbly rather than uh you know straight and uniform mm. if you add more detail that basically adds more ridges to the um the effect the it's quite interesting isn't it like using adobe illustrator like using something like vector artwork it can sometimes more. look really computerized, like, and sometimes yeah. you don't want that. So it's, it's this sort of thing is really, really useful um, to know about. So, but it's still it's a vector, handy fully scalable. For, yeah. Exactly, and it's still it's definitely handy for non-artists like me who <laughs> can't do uh, drawing. Don't I'm not using a Wacom tablet. I'm not using uh, you know a touch screen or, or or an iPad. I'm using a mouse on a desk, but mainly because I feel more comfortable with that. Um, but it does allow me to kind of get my artistic juices going. Okay, so that's looking nice and wobbly and definitely not uniform. I'm kind of pleased with that. I like the fact that there's a gappy tooth there. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of it's kind a little of cool. bit more demonic. Yeah. Um, let's just try and position these um, so that we can get it as scary looking as possible. It is, it's kind of scary looking, but also a little bit friendly. So yes, it is a demon, but we're not being too, um, you know, making this thing hold this whole thing. They're like as a brand. happy to see you like an old, yeah. an old friend. Maybe, maybe you're yeah. a demon too. That's it. That's it. What do we think about this? Eye? I think the left eye is a bit too uniform. I'm just going to roughen that one up as well and do a little curve. Maybe it's ever so slightly too wide compared to the other one. We're getting a bit finicky here, but anyway, that's basically. <laughs> it's nice really interesting because, like, cutting just a little bit can like kind of turn it from like yeah. friendly to sorrow like really quickly, so or a little confused look instead <laughs> of a yeah happy one. Okay, cool. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. I've just applied a stroke onto this um, to fatten it up a little bit, but we obviously we want to rasterize or sort of flatten that now. So if I do my special magic button, expand, uh, that has made everything joined up with a stroke. And if I just press Unite, that'll bring that to it. And obviously that has created all sorts of horrible effects here. Um, why has that happened? Maybe we should do expand appearance first and then Unite. There we go. That fixed uh, it. There we go. Just had all sorts of problems in there. Okay, cool. There's a little bit of a problem here. If we were ever to actually print this, it would be a bit too much detail there. So I'm just going to use the pencil tool to get rid of that horrible little um, rough edge there that the effect created. Have a quick check of it. Um, same here, look. Smooth that out a little bit. Now, obviously, you can do this um, with the smooth tool inside the, um, the pencil tool panel here. Uh, so if anything is like really rough, you can just drag the smooth tool over that and it creates less path points. Mm -hmm. Smooth out any kinks that you might have in the design. Like this one here. There we go. It's a pretty handy little feature. Okay. I think it also reduces the file size as well. Mm, less definitely. points. Yeah. Right, let's duplicate that. Okay, so we've got our design pretty much there. We can now start to... Um, build it out to make it one color. So if I select everything at the minute, it's obviously black and white. So our color, color properties panel has a question mark in it because there's more than one color selected. So let's make this one color. So we're gonna select everything that's black, unite that together. We're gonna take our white section. I'm actually gonna unite those as make that a shape, which means that now when I uh, minus front, actually cut that away from the design mm. one thing i'm going to do as well is i'm just going to round that these two corners off so that we're not getting that kink at the top and hopefully that might just sort of best sort of make that design look a little bit smoother um maybe i'll even do the tips of the horns as well just to mm. touch so that it's not um so 
not so much of a point. Oh, I've got the um, wrong corner handle selected there. Just give me a second. There's too many path points here. That's what's <laughs> going on. Um, what can I do? What can I do? If I press option on the corner handle and click once, it changes that to a smooth. There we go. That worked. So what was that? Copy the uh, corner handle value of that one. So this is a really interesting step that you just did because I was going to ask you about this and then you just did it. To, because it's symmetrical, you get in there, you don't really want to be eyeballing something like this, right? You want it yeah, to be perfect. Right. So you've copied right up the top. Hopefully you guys can see that. You, yeah, you're right copying there. the exact... What, so you what exactly the corner, are you copying there? So that is the, the radius of the corner value of that mm -hmm. point. So in Adobe Illustrator, you have a corner handle on any two like hard points joined together, which you can then drag and make into a, a bigger corner. Um, now, that has a value up in this pixel value up here, which if you do one thing on one side, you can copy it exactly to the other or to all corners on a design. So you're being nice and consistent. Um, you can just use that value up there, select it all and just paste in your value at the top. That's beautiful. I actually didn't know you could do that. So oh, right. um, this is so two from two streams. You've shown me something in Adobe Illustrator, which is a program that I love. Um, something that I did not know, which is great. Um, and just checking in the chat as well. Um, someone in chat, Tom, is also saying didn't know about the smooth tool. And that's what I love about this. So like watching other creatives design, like the whole point of this wasn't, hey, here are 50 tools that you didn't know. But watching yeah. James create this, we get to kind of pause and say, hang on, like, what was that little trick you did there? Um, and then we get, you know, collectively we get stuff out of it. We learn things right. that we didn't know. It's great. That's the same in any career in graphic design as well. I learned everything I know from other designers that I work with. And the only yeah. way to do that in our in today's world where we all work remotely is to watch streams like this. So, yeah, that's uh, I'm a big advocate of watching other people work, not just yeah. to copy them. But, you know, learn what they do. Okay, so I skipped a step there without explaining it, but I took the circle that we used from our design, which I left over here, brought that into the design and just centered horizontally and vertically centered that. And because we left our design where it is, it's exactly where the center of that um, kettlebell is. So now I can just expand that out with shift and option from the center, bring it around the kettlebell. And we're going to put some type on this uh, design now. So in our sketch, we've got exercise to exercise. And I did a bit of um, you know research beforehand and found a lovely looking font uh, from Adobe Fonts called Poster Cut New. Okay, now this font is lovely and rough. It's actually in the horror section of Adobe's fonts. <laughs> I um, didn't even know there just, was a horror yeah, section. Yeah, <laughs> so if you drag the drop down on Adobe Fonts and check it, there's, there's all sorts of like funky, uh, Art Deco, Geometric. If you go down further, you get some weird ones. And one of them is Horror. And I was having a good look through those yesterday. And this one I'm loving. It's nice and weighty. It's got a lovely rough edge to it. it looks like really sort of almost sinister. So we're going to do a... Um, I'm going to put our type into here now. Just double check my spelling, everyone, please. Um, uh -oh. Okay, yeah. First word is fine. So we're going to take our... Um, Let's take a type on a path tool. So hover, click on our type tool and just keep holding on to it. Scroll down to type on a path. I'm going to click on our um, circle around the kettlebell here. We're going to paste in our exercise wording. Now I'm going to use the paragraph um, panel here to uh, write align that type. So it's aligned to the right hand side of this design. I'm going to use these little handles here to move that type around the place where we want to. I don't want it to go any further past the um, the, ke the kettlebell's handle. Okay, so I'm going to drag it up there so that whatever happens, it doesn't go any further past that handle. Double click on type on a path to bring up the options. Press preview. I'm going to align that to the center of that type on a path. And then we can use uh, another tool in a minute just to make sure that that's um, and, the same. And when you're doing a circle, like, you know, like a logo lockup or, or something like this, maybe a badge or a bit of iconography, and you want to do something on an arch or a circle, do you always select um, it to be in the middle rather than the top or the bottom? Uh, not always. It depends. If you're flipping type from one side to the other, then yeah, you kind of have to do that. If you were to say align the, the height to the ascender on top of the line uh, and then you flipped it and reversed it to the bottom of the design, it would be in the wrong place. You'd have to then re redo it again. So right. putting it in the center allows it to stay the same 
right and left top and bottom so but yeah you have to experiment a little bit and obviously there's loads of times when that doesn't work um so yeah let's just bring this type down a little bit so i want to bring this type down to a point where we can actually read the word exercise so i'm hoping that it's still um readable in this space i'm just going to bring the current the tracking out a little bit uh just so that those, those letters aren't bunching together too much so now i can then take that i'm just going to move that handle a little bit away from the and as a general handle. rule you probably want to ex extend the tracking a little bit when you're doing something like this right because you're bunching yeah, the inside exactly the because exactly right so that the bottom parts of those um letters are going to almost touch unless you do that which is kind of might get in the way a little bit depends on the font but yeah it's mm -hmm. worth um actually just tracking it out and also you'll see why as well here if i i'm i'm, I'm I'd like that type to be just a little bit weightier. So I might add like a stroke to it, just to, you know, like a hairline stroke, just to fatten it out a little bit. And that will definitely make them smush together. So um, I then have to track, like, track it out just a little bit as well. Cool. All right. So now I can copy that and press Command F to paste in place. Uh, I'm going to rotate that around by 90 degrees. I'm going to use our paragraph tool to left align this one. And I'm going to take that handle and drag it over to the other side. So it's, um, we've run out of room there, so I'm just going to move that handle down a little bit. Now this side is spelt differently. Exorcise, like exercising a demon, a demon or the exorcist. And I'm going to try and line that up so that type is nice and centered. Um, I missed a question to... before, if you don't mind. Um, yep, sure. Uh, would you ever use image image trace when vectorizing a sketch, or do you prefer recreating from scratch? I prefer rec recreating from scratch. Now, every designer is different. The reason I prefer recreating from scratch is, like I said before, I suck at drawing. <laughs> so, if you image trace a shit drawing, apologies for language. If you Im image trace a drawing that is terrible, um, the design will be terrible. So, yeah, I. I tend to work from scratch because I can kind of rely on the software to help me out a little bit and um, you know make my design look better than the sketch that is inevitably going to be terrible <laughs> all right let's make our central word two exercise two exercise center align that type and I'm going to bring the handles oops bring the transform handles around to left and to right and now we can shrink this circle down to fit in the middle, the central point of that kettlebell. So that's much in our sketch now. Exercise to exercise. It's looking pretty good. What's happening here? We're getting a little bit of a sort of um, a, a, an artifact of adding that stroke to the type. You see it's jutting out there and making these little spikes. Yeah. That's because the corner stroke of the the, sort of the one pixel stroke I've added to that type is set to a square. So this one here. So if I just press round, that'll disappear. Hey, that's oh. cool. Yeah, I was wondering when that, I, I didn't see it, but um, when you yeah, zoomed so, in, I was so, wondering where that could have come from when it was yeah, still- Yeah, it's happened here text. as well on, yeah, on right. the E. Uh, if I just select all, oops, if I just select that, and I'm selecting both the left and the right by doing that because it's still a full circle. Uh, stroke panel, corner, round. And then it's just the appears. it's just the corner. Okay, interesting. Yeah, oh, it's because it's it's because it's a font that's yeah um, has has angles and has path points that connect in weird ways. It's, it's trying to trying to fix often. the corner of the stroke and wrap it around a mm. potentially tight path and creating a, a, a sort of ext extrusion of that, uh, cool. um, which is not what yeah. we want. Uh, one thing I forgot to do: this is still white, so I'm going to remove this white portion from the background. This is still a shape, so I can unite that and then minus front that from my design. Now, when I select this shape, it's just it's black. Um, and there we go. We've got our. Oh, I forgot to. And I almost lost my central part of my handle mm -hmm. there. Uh, do you know what? To so zoom what, out. Important to zoom yeah, out after you do yeah, something. Yeah, quickly. Right? Double check that. So one way to get around that, I can't just minus front from this because it's selecting both the isolated shape and the shape itself. So if I minus front from that, it deletes the top handle, which we don't want to do. I could use the shape builder tool to do this. That's a quick way to do it. Or I can just ungroup this shape from the top. So now when I select the handle, I'm only selecting the horns. And now when I minus front, it'll do that. And then I can just group these back together again and we're all good. 
So that's nice. one design. Um, let's make that black. Now, I picked some colors before this. Uh, I really like the um, these colors. I'm going to just show you because we're going, we're going for a sort of spooky theme. I'm going to put this um, background color on my background. Drag that down. I'm just going to eyedropper this color that I prepared earlier and then lock that and back to our artwork. Nice. And then let's bring uh, design down. Duplicate that down. How much better does that look? Okay, I'm going to vertically align that. So is there a reason that you would build in just black and white at the beginning? Yep. Uh, I always try and design in one color uh, at the start of a project so that we're not um, we're not kind of hamstrung or pigeonholed down a certain route by picking color too early. Mm. Also, make sure that the logo works in one color, right? So if you're, if you're able to print in black and white uh, just, you know, on a piece of paper or like you're making a letterhead for a company and they only print in black and white, your logo's kind of got a safe version that you can use for, mm. you know, for printing in black and white only. It's really kind of crucial step. Uh, I'm going to outline this type because I'm pretty happy with where it is. And the, and the reason I'm also doing that is because it's going to get in the way at the bottom of that design. Um, so to do that, shift and command O outlines the type. You can also expand it. Um, now, in our sketch, let's bring this back down again. We've got a um, little dumbbell in the bottom of the design here. So we could just draw that and use our drawing and uh, sort of roughen um option again i'm also going to just change this just to a sort of off blue so it's not quite as aggressive um mm, right, yeah cool. when you're using oh. that full black it can sometimes be yeah really deep a bit shiny That's right mm. um also like it's just yeah yeah you said it you said it it's, it's absolutely like when you don't use like an off black or you use uh, what do they call it a key black or registration black which uses registration, all the colors yeah, yeah yeah it's um it's a little bit too much sometimes isn't it let's draw a dumbbell here and i'm just bending it slightly to match the shape of the kettlebell it's something i learned very early on when we was printing something with a client and i'd use two different types of blacks and one of them was complete full-on black registration, um, registration yeah. black and then the I... other one had a bit of color in it and they look so different printed it was almost do. like i think we redid it yeah, I, I, it's one of the things that I still feel out of my depth working in print. I started out in, in digital design and I still to this day have nightmares about working in print. I used to work for the Daily Telegraph magazine and uh, they were, had all sorts of rules around um, obviously like, you know, print production rules. And oh, it just, I never got it right. I always um, worry about that I've done something wrong or you know working in a way that's not going to work in print it terrifies yeah. me even to this day in fact i was reading the other day about a um a process in logo design that i didn't even know um which i'm not even going to tell you because it was so embarrassing i didn't know about it <laughs> but yeah it's just one of those things where you you, you don't know what you don't know until somebody yeah yeah totally okay cool well, we've got a nice sort of dumbbell to sort of fill this, the bottom shape of that uh, it's a little bit tight, this one. I'm just going to bring the straight weight of that down. I just used the, the brush tool to do that and then group them together. Just have a little separation in those. How are we doing for time? Uh, we have about nine minutes left. No, a little bit less. Okay, yeah. mate, we might get this lock up done. Um, and then maybe next time we can do some variations of it for a brand or we can do some mock-ups or maybe even a client presentation. Yeah, uh, cool. I'm just going to duplicate that. Here we go. We've got a print question. <laughs> for yeah. uh, for print, <laughs> do you guys ever get the colors to spot or process colors? See, don't ask me questions like that. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, process colors. So, so I use process colors inside... Um, uh, Illustrator all the time, mainly because of this great feature, which I only figured out recently, that like the global process colors. So, for instance, if I open up my um, my color swatch here, oh, where's it gone? Where's it gone? It's not the one I need. Hold on, I need this one, don't I? Ah, oh, hang on, we'll do it this way. Uh, if I create a new swat color swatch and I press global for this, and then everything I go through, I assign that to uh, global inside my the color that i just made now if i want to change that color for that 
um, option. I'll just double click on here and then make my tweaks inside the design. It does that across every single design. Mm. Um, that's really handy. Um, obviously, there's other ways to do that, but it just kind of, it, instead of, you know, selecting the same color um, or select same fill color, this only changes the things that we've assigned to that uh, yep. design. So it helps you to keep it all the same. I'm just going to add that to that too as well. All right, one final thing we'll do before we... Um, finish up i'm just going to center align this i want to make this whole thing one shape i want to add a little texture to it so i've got these um these sort of jpeg textures over here i'm just going to copy one of those and let's move our sketch out of the way just so we can see this in its true beauty so when you said you make no. it a shape did you just group it is that what you i united it with oh you uni united everything okay Sorry, I am working with my magic buttons again. And, um, That's cool. Just, just, clar just clarifying. I just wanted to see. Window, Pathfinder, Unite. This one on the left, which is my button. Cool. Okay. Now, paste my um, texture over the top of this and selecting them both. I'm going to go in my um, appearance panel, which I've just closed. Where is it? Uh, I can't get hold of it. There we go. Oh, sorry, wrong panel, transparency panel. This is the one I want. Select them both, press make mask, and that adds a texture to our design in a really, really easy way. And then that way I can just um, slide that texture around or resize it uh, in order to get a sort of roughened texture to our design. I'm just gonna resize it a bit to fill it. Cool. That's cool. So that's in a good place. So yeah, I'm liking that. I think that's a nice place to to finish up uh, and then maybe next time we can work on some mock-ups we can do a variation of this uh, to be a versatile logo you know stacking it with type um, mm. making a version that works for instance in like a website navigation and then maybe I'll show you um, like a few things about how I present to a client and, and maybe you know a brand presentation but yeah fantastic that's, uh, point. Well, that's that's awesome. Well, thanks, thanks, James, and, and let us know in chat as well. So, what, what were the options? So, our next stream is on Thursday, so it's in two days. Well, it's Thursday here in Australia. Mm -hmm. if, if you're in the US, it might be Wednesday night or something, wherever you are. Um, Forty eight hours away. That's the best way to think about it. Um, so, nice. thinking um, we could expand on this and go down a couple of different routes, right? So, we could mm -hmm. kind of add, have it as a logo. So, maybe we want to have a different, few different lockups, like maybe the the icon by itself. Yeah. Um, and then maybe some text examples as well. Like you might want to have exercise to exercise as a separate, you know, you know, yeah, lock up like or a, something. A lock up of type, exactly. Mm. We need we need to basically make variations for the client that they can use in any different design medium. Uh, that might mean extracting things from the design or stacking the type in a way that we can use in in smaller. Um, applications like you know like the favicon on a website or a website navigation header or business cards you know that kind of thing um so yeah maybe we'll do that and then we can work through how to um prepare that for a client presentation cool that that sounds awesome favicons are often very difficult to actually pull off really well i've found yeah, yeah. um you think it'd be easy because they're so small but it's like designing a stamp it's like this is actually exactly. really hard <laughs> Um, yeah, well, looking at the detailed nature of our design, this could be quite a tough one as well. So maybe there's other parts that we can um, nick to make a favicon. But yeah, you're right. It's, it is quite tricky. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, um, thanks, everybody. And thank you, James. Uh, where can people find you as well if they want to kind of follow up outside of the stream? Uh, but, uh, probably Instagram, at BarnardCo is my Instagram handle, or my website is Barnard.co with all the links there. So you can find out some more of my uh, portfolio work and the logo packages. But yeah, the links to all my socials are at Barnard.co. Awesome. That's perfect. Well, thanks, everyone. Thanks for the thanks, thanks for the question. Oh, we have some votes for mock-ups down here. Okay, cool. We'll check it out. Um, we <laughs> will see you guys uh, in nice. 48 hours for part two of this stream. And uh, thanks again, James. Thanks a lot, guys. Take it easy. See you then. Bye. Bye.